Welcome to the On Hollow Ground podcast. Wide one and hello and welcome to episode two of the On Hollow Ground podcast. This episode is all about the song Shut Down, which is our second single for the forthcoming album blood is blood released this coming july slash august summer 2020 uh i'm joined again by my sexy partner uh guitarist vocalist um and just general idiot ryan scott say hello hello (laughs) so uh basically we're just gonna you know carry on like we did in the first episode and we're just gonna discuss um like music and break down all the instrumental shit and then talk about like the lyrical meaning and do a watch along and you know just chat about the track really yeah definitely yeah um i didn't realize it was june last year we released this one oh right so yeah broken was like march time this was june march so Mm, yeah hmm. yeah um so when will the show have been that we that we played that would have been like May time, right? Surely. Um, was that the invasion think, one? Yeah, it was. We'll discuss that more in the video part of this podcast. But oh, I think it okay, was like okay, right, okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm the podcast director, so you've got to listen to me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I want to say April time, maybe March, April. Yeah. Fucking but awesome. Feeling, yeah. It but was, then it again, was I'm decent. not allowed to talk about it yet, am I, sir? Not just yet. Stop spaffing your load prematurely. <laughs> well, mate, we're going to be that serious and stick to the format. Music, go, talk about it. Okay, oh, we'll do. to a lot of hip-hop. <laughs> I yeah. like hip-hop. Brilliant. Well, right. that was... <laughs> to be fair, with this track, literally that first riff was all I had for like a month. It was doing my head and I, I struggled with this one a little bit, but then it all just kind of came together. Oh, you did actually, didn't you? Yeah, yeah you know, took a while to get off the ground. Yeah. Which is a yeah. riff that you could have written a few years ago or, a f- you know, a few years. Yeah, it was an oldie with really. that. I think I played it in practice yeah. like a year or two ago. It was an oldie with that. But I, I liked like it, so I was like, you riff we'll use it. So yeah, it was. Sorry. Yeah, it was a bit, a bit weird, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, again with the chorus, there's cleans on the second half of the chorus, and like again going back to what I said with Broken, I wanted more of a heavy groovy chorus, so like a riffy kind of chorus instead mm-hmm. of power chords or single notes or any form of chord and stuff like that. But yeah, I wanted a kind of just a bouncy kind of groovy chorus, and like I like what Wood does with the drums because. Um, in the first half is kind of playing the cymbals on the accents and playing fills over it so it's kind of mm-hmm. on a first listen it's hard to process what you know to kind of nod your head along to him and then the second half it'll go four on the cymbal and then three on the snare which kind of sets that groove so like yeah. uh periphery do that quite a lot where they'll have a rhythm and then the drummer will play the accents on the cymbals and then mm. For the next time around, he'll go to playing the beats and the cymbals again, so it kind of adds up and makes sense, and that's pretty much what Wood did for the chorus of this one. I really like it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I'm quite a, a fan of the chorus. When he sent me the thinking, MIDI yeah. drums over for it, I was like, that's cool of that. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, obviously that, that yeah. is a chorus, but when I think about it now, it, it almost feels like a bit of a pre-chorus and then when you start yeah. thinking that, that that's kind of like the chorus isn't it yeah it kind it's, of is honestly it's, it's just come to me that way yeah even though it's all the chorus it, yeah. it is split into two so it's like a pre-chorus and a chorus even though and i remember because that, like uh, going, going back to what that. we said about adding and taking elements away but playing the same thing that happens in that chorus because it's the same rhythm but then the second time around the harmony's taken out and the lead line's put in yeah, so yeah. that's probably why it feels like a build-up to it because you're adding and removing different elements as it goes. Yeah, and uh, I think that that, term, that change that you just said is quite apparent, really, in that you know that change over from part one of the chorus to part two. Yeah, and I remember, like, do I remember this correctly? We didn't even 
did we not think about having maybe maybe is it people never learn? Is it, am I right in thinking that we weren't going to have the text to speak initially in the first part of the chorus? That was just going to be empty. Oh no! no um, scream! I think weren't you? I think yeah, we were. You were going to scream, and we then were, the second time you were going to clean. Scream! We're thinking of things to do with it, and we 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 hit. I think we hit quite a few walls with this song where we were like, "Where do we go now? Yeah, where do yeah. we go now? Where do we go now?" <laughs> and obviously, like you and I have just got this fetish now for pitch down vocals and you know basically and that kind of thing. anything which doesn't sound like us because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't sing yeah <laughs> or scream um, or scream oh but yeah the, don't, don't mean it. <laughs> the text-to-speech thing i thought was quite cool i'd and i'd be quite up for using that later on down the line as well i, I liked it it was cool yeah. I, I remember um was it miroslav who wasn't too keen on it yeah yeah the producer wasn't massive on it but it grew on him yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I He's done a fantastic job with this album, by the way, as Miroslav as well. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Would like recommend. He, he's, all, he's all just really locked in. Yeah, Miroslav Boris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely recommend that if you want to go over Derby Way and, you know, spend uh, spend a bit of time with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that, that chorus, um, it, it's, it's an odd one. It's, it's definitely an odd one. Um, I, what I kind of like about it is that you have the lyrics spoken quite clearly in a text to speech voice which obviously isn't mega clear is it but <laughs> you kind of like you get the preempt of what the chorus is going to be yeah and I've, I've always kind of seen it that way yeah definitely and i like that the chorus lyrics are used again for the build up to the breakdown mm-hmm. and like that build up to the breakdown again like i said in the previous podcast about broken we're introducing a lot of like electronic drum it's 808 subs to give that kind of hip hop vibe like at the start of the first verse that really becomes clear because that that entire verse to me is my favorite part of the song it's just a bit of fun and you know the step to me step to me one two three but yeah totally yeah, I, I, remember, that I remember is... writing that with you um and i remember like what were the lyrics initially i was like step to me step to me one two three between the devil and the deep blue sea <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i just remember like saying to you like I, I probably want to do the step to me step to me i can't think of that second line and that between the devil and the deep blue sea it, it was there for a while i knew i was gonna get rid of it mm. um but I remember telling you that, and you were just like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just laughed at you, didn't I? I mean, you know, it's just those things that like, you hear it when you like, you, you visualise a vocal before you've even got any lyrics. And you, cause I remember, like, um, watching an interview with Bring Me Horizon once, and, like, Holly Sykes had talked about how Can You Feel My Heart was just something you randomly came out with, and it stuck. Yeah. Like, it wasn't necessarily anything to do with the actual track, but... It just stuck. Yeah, and what then format they came. you sometimes get like a hook which doesn't have any meaning, which you have to kind of put in context with a, a whole song. Yeah, don't you? And, and that's like being a lyricist and shit. You know, because I'm an artist. Or, mm. um, that's something that I've always struggled with, really, like putting stuff in that's, you know, not necessarily. I don't know, like complete with the overall message, but. On this album, I think I've done a lot more of that than I ever have done and just kind of got over it and, you know, thrown a few zip zips and... Oh, actually, we've got the brap brap in this, haven't we? Talk about... Oh, yeah, we've got... <laughs> yeah, the, again, this song, the singles released, it's, we yeah. were, like, just a bit of fun. Like, it's kind of saying, this is what we're about, this is what we do. Check the album out, it's a little more meaning to it, but like, it, the singles we want to put out are a little more, like... Just, I don't know, just a bit of fun. That's what we're after at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. we, we we were so super serious when we started. Yeah, and... writing-wise. It, but now, it, I don't know, I'm, I kind of diluted it down. It's a little less technical. and a, I spent more focus on songwriting instead of yeah. fancy riffs and stuff. I, I think it's just like as, as taste changes. Because I remember like 2013 when we started, 2012, massive like tech metal scene in Leeds um yeah and, you know, throughout the country really a lot of these bands that we were playing with um you know you, you kind of emulate each other don't you yeah and it, there's not as much kind of tech metal going on I think it's got <coughs> the music's got less technical and more heavy I'd say 
Yeah, definitely. It's people going for heavy and catchy now, which is what we're trying to do with this. But yeah. just putting yeah, so we're just different, again. <laughs> different elements in, like putting um, electronic hi hat over that first verse, it gives it a kind of almost like an industrial feel. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm yeah. thinking as well with a lot of our stuff now that I don't think I'd have necessarily listened to our first EP as a listener, but that's changed. And especially now with this new album, yeah, if a band came out with this album. It's what I would want to listen to. Yeah, definitely. Like our first couple of EPs. If I would have listened to it as a consumer, yeah, it's all right. But I think this is the first kind of product we've had where I've been like, actually, yeah, this is this could potentially be taken seriously. This represents like who we are. Yeah, it re- it re- kind of it, it represents what we've built up to. Like, yeah, it's kind of yeah. a bit of a journey for my writing style as well because I can, if I look back at the first kind of stuff that I wrote, mm. it's so much different now, and it's not necessarily. If anything, it's probably a lot easier to play now, but it's more of a final product. It's more of a full thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not just focusing on cool guitar riffs anymore. Like I'm writing a full song instead of just about... a riff fest. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize you were going to speak again. Um, do you want to talk about the the breakdown at the end? Yeah. Um, well, the, those the strings that dun 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 dun. Wiley yeah, strings. Wiley strings. Yeah, the first thing, right? <laughs> Jack was like, um, put some like plucked strings in that bit. And I put it in, and they were like, fuck it, that sounds like a Wiley track or something. <laughs> like, he's going to come in like, she's wearing my Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> oh. and, um, but the, the same strings as well are used at the start of the track, but it's like playing a different melody, but it's the same sort of mm. plucked string kind of thing. But, um, the start is pretty interesting, actually, because that melody and kind of composition is the exact same as the choir in the verse. So, again, that's keeping melodic and rhythmic concepts exactly the same, but just changing them slightly and adding and removing elements, like we said in the last video, uh, podcast, sorry, where I've taken the same melody but just used it later on with a different instrument. So it feels different, but it's not like, again, like uses it in hip hop a lot but that is yet another influence that I'm putting in at the minute is by kind of taking the same thing and just making it slightly different later on and yeah, I think it, yeah. that that to me kind of it captures your listener a bit because it's familiar so, well, that, that, that's, what, that's what songwriting's about, isn't it? You know, you, yeah, you, you've got a first chorus, first chorus structure that yeah, you, you, you and for a reason, for a purpose. You, you're comfortable with it because you've heard it before. So, like, yeah. even though it's played on a different instrument, it's melodically and rhythmically the same, so you're familiar with it, and you're like, yeah, you feel... It's like feeling safe with it because you know it. Well, I, I mean, like, you talk about that, but look at what, like, one of the main hooks of the entire song is shut down. Shut well, down. yeah, I exactly. How many yeah. times I say shut mm-hmm. down in that track, but we should have a shut down counter at some point. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe when we um, when we watch through it in a bit, we'll we'll count them. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's right, and it's just about like creating something that's familiar. That the next time it comes round, like I remember thinking this with Broken as well. That if you, even if you haven't heard of us, hopefully I can lead you in a bit of a fist pump for those us. And I think like the same said for the shut down as well. Yeah. Uh, if, if I tell you those two words, it's two words to remember. It's not a whole phrase. It's not a whole you know sentence or anything. You've got to remember two words, and it's pretty obvious where they're coming as well. Yeah. Once you've heard it once round, you can join in the second time because it's not particularly yeah clever how it's put in. It's just stuck <laughs> in, which yeah, it, is it, what you want. It's fucking dumb. It's that's what you. Yeah, that's it's, what you want though. Mm-hmm. Like, dumb shit is rememberable, isn't it? Yeah. Rememberable. Rememberable. Uh, and I think to call this song anything other than shut down would just be ludicrous. Mm. That's not that's not a rapper there. I know you like hip hop. <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go on to lyrics? Uh you can if you want, mate. Your your lyricist here. <laughs> Fuck off. Um so like the first line is confront the issue and I hope this rings true. This could start a new for both me and you. Uh, as I said in the previous podcast, you know, it's all about my dad, um, his death and the relationship we had when, you know, when he was knocking about. And that line there, 
for many years, we were just sort of out of sync. Sometimes he'd try and contact me. Sometimes I'd try and contact him. And we were just so out of sync. And, it, 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 you know, like there were moments when he was angry at me and there was moments that I was angry at him. And he just, he, he left a, he led a pretty rough life towards like, you know, last 10 years or something. Um, and I remember just sitting in my car one day and just thinking, right, I'm going to call him and I'm going to, confront the issue i'm going to talk about this right now um and when i made that phone call it just went to voicemail and i thought to myself uh, do i really want to air all this on a voicemail and and i did a little bit i sort of you know had a bit of a conversation just on one side hmm. and that wasn't actually too long before he passed away and i remember thinking that that was my last conversation with him. That was my last contact with him. And I, 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 I did go off on him, on him a little bit. And I remember thinking, shit, those last things that he'll have ever had me said to him were that phone call when, you know, I was confronting that issue and, you know, and going for it. Like, thankfully, it wasn't. I, I do remember a, another instance when he did call me back later on. It was a very short call, phone call, so I kind of forgot about it. But mm. um, I, I'm really glad that those weren't the the final words that yeah, the I'd said to him. <laughs> departure kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, off topic of the lyrics and stuff, but the conversation we had, the last one, it, it, it wasn't too bad anyway. It was all right. But, um, yeah, so, like, it, it was just about confronting all these issues that we had and um, shutting it all down and just sort of going back to square one and just trying to, build a relationship that had just been strained and strained and strained over like 20 years really because yeah. this goes back to like i don't know like 96 when when my parents split up and i know it's like oh he's writing an album about his parents who split up but <laughs> <laughs> it, you know it, things affect people and you know that that was that was my journey and shit and you know those were my challenges and how it set me back at school and stuff and how it changed my perspective and, you know, and everything and how... Yeah, it's I... not necessarily about the whole point of them breaking up. It's more the chronology behind it of what happened exactly. through your yeah. life because of it kind of thing. Yeah, 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 totally. Mm. Um, the lyrics shut down, they sort of ring true in, in, in two aspects. They, they, they kind of, like, they used to shut down the the issues that we that we had that I wanted to achieve in that phone call that I never really got to have. But I always felt like he's a quite crude one, this one, but, you know, he's no longer around. Like, he, he shut down. And, and I always felt mm. a little bit guilty and a bit weird about that one initially. And I had to sort of get past that um, to be able to put it into the song and, and, and do it, you know, proper justice. But... Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's quite hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, shut down, you know, like, you're dead, you've passed. Um, those are quite dodgy lyrics in there, and I did feel quite a lot of uncertainty about those words initially. But the track is also a stage of the grief. Well, it went through last time. Each track is a different stage of grief, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that, actually, because you know, the words that you take in this song are mourning your loss, emotions protrude. Yeah. Sunshine colours are mocking the mood, and this was. It's more, that's more confusion. You don't really know how to feel, do you? Like exactly, yeah. Mm. Um, the, the sunshine colours are mocking the mood. I remember my dad having this quilt cover, um, and like it would just look really bright and vibrant, but yet, yeah, like you know, the, the life that he led wasn't very bright and vibrant. Yeah. It was very underhanded and you know pretty shitty really so and going like seeing a contrast between that <laughs> yeah and go into the line shut the fuck up and drown your sorrows yeah so what, um, yeah that's obviously something to do with a drinking problem right <laughs> yeah yeah um definitely i do you know what like i kind of kind of completely skimmed over that but i'm glad you sort of brought it up there but because for me that is the main point of the song like <laughs> And that's what I took out of it is the whole drinking thing. Yeah, yeah, and like I know it's no secret to you and you know people I'm close with and stuff, but I live a straight edge lifestyle, bro. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, 
like I said, you know, before, and I think I've already said it, like, you know, those who repeat, those who do history are doomed to repeat or whatever the fucking saying is. I've yeah, it's like you could have gone, you could have gone one of two ways. Like, two yeah. people who have gone through exactly the same experience can have two completely different outcomes. Yeah, so exactly. like out of this, you've kind of got a stigma attached to alcohol. You're like, you, you're mm-hmm. not with us. You like, you come on nights out with us and stuff, and like we've all been pissed out of his head around you. We just had a laugh, but that's yeah. drinking in a safe environment. You know, like no one's yes, been dicker. Exactly. Whereas I think by the sounds of it, you've had a few experiences where it's not been such a safe environment with drink involved, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and like you know, I, I kind of explore that a little bit with. Um, and getting by, and also um, the track Blood is Blood. You're definitely mm. right there, Ryan. Like, that's bang on what it is. It's, it's about, you know, drinking in those environments where you are safe or drinking in those environments where you feel, you know, unsafe or... Yeah, definitely, yeah. And you when, you're, and whatever. when you're a kid, it's, it's going to affect you, isn't it? So you're going to grow up and have the stigma attached to alcohol like you do because you don't drink yeah. beer like and I, I said thinking you, like you, I, I, I was never going to be dependent on yeah. any kind of substance and that's why and we've got the song called substance which is also about my dad as well <laughs> yeah and granted see, you've never belittled anyone for doing it because i mean i i like a bit of a drink bar, so but you oh, you'd never be bill- pints with lads like an ordinary oh, lad cup, oh. couple of tennis with boys and that in it yeah oh, corona oh, challenge yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um but yeah you've never a little me for it or like you thought of yourself above anyone who does drink no, it's just totally in, in, you know it's your own it's stigma and it's me. yeah and it's your own kind of preference in it like if me and you have gone through before amount of times when someone's like eh why don't you drink eh, eh yeah I don't get it's it it's exhausting fuck off man like you shouldn't have to explain yourself and we've even had that on the scene haven't we like a couple of times yeah definitely like, yeah. oh what you don't drink I've had Fuck to off. say to people before be like oh why don't Jack drink he's well born and I'm like he's not it's just his own choice it's like <laughs> you know there'd be a lot of stuff which you do which he's like that's fucking stupid why are you doing that for yeah. like, it's your own personal choice and it? it's you know well, I've I mean, never like understood it like people have binges look at me and you man like we'll go out for some food we'll get an 18 inch pizza get some Ben and Jerry's a tub each and just smash oh, it we're like, partial to that one as uh, metabolism was a little bit <laughs> higher but you know I can't be doing that anymore <laughs> 27 now mate that's the shit that I want to do you know just eat yeah. chocolate before I mm. became a bit lactose intolerant <laughs> just a bit just just a bit yeah Jack Jack recently found out that he's a little bit lactose intolerant yeah and he's 30 so it's taken him 30 years to figure that one out. <laughs> and that's why I fucking stink. <laughs> I wasn't even going to say that, but you said it. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is every single podcast episode we do, we're going to throw a little bonus feature in there and give you a little story, a little story time, so you can sit down with your cocoa and your cookies and uh, just enjoy a nice tale from the road from a member of On Hollow Ground or someone affiliated. So today's... Today's guest is um, it's, it's Ryan. It's Ryan. It's me. It's Ryan from On All the Ground. I'm my own guest on All the Ground. <laughs> um, what story I'm, are you going to tell us? I'm going to go today because we're on the topic of the shutdown single. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so basically, one of the, the lyrics is we've kind of got like little ad libs on the verse to give it again a bit of a kind of hip-hop vibe where i've always i've always seen it as posturing you know like yeah what blood yeah yeah and like because i've just kind of shouted random stuff in and then Miz kind of filtered it and one of the things that i shouted was pass <laughs> <laughs> and that's because when we were recording this track um on like i think we we're recording <laughs> your vocals for it and our mate Nath, Nath Dalton, I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with him. He's a bit of a clown, but we love him. He's not and, in a um, band, but he looks like someone in the band. Yeah, he looks like the guitarist and the bassist combined in the band. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, he came down to record with us, but the... It's kind of like a rock and doll with him, isn't it? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, proper, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, Miroslav's recording studio is, is part of like a gym sort of thing. Um, so you go through like, it's like a dance studio isn't it? with yeah. loads of weights and like punch bag and stuff like that and crash mats. So you go through that and then you go into the studio. So we sat there recording Jack's vocals and um, 
Miroslav stopped the track and he was like, can you wear some of it? Because I'm sure some of it were coming from outside. And in the distance, we just did this. <laughs> we're like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? So there's actually a video on someone's Instagram story if you bury it somewhere. Um, and we'd all walked out of the studio to see what the fuck was going on in the dance studio. And Nerf was absolutely setting about this punch bag, just going, has, 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 has. And we were like, dude, we're trying to fucking record vocals, man. And they were like, oh, sorry. <laughs> like, proper at top of his voice. We've got it on film somewhere. I need to dig it out. But absolutely screaming, ass, ass, ass. And ruined Jack's take. <laughs> We literally we we had we listened to it back and you could hear him in the background and Miz were just like what the fuck is that? And it turns out we're a gorilla rattling cage outside, wasn't it? Well, I remember him like apologising for it and then stopping, but then later on did it again. Like Miroslav being like, I can hear it again. I can literally hear the bag hitting the wall, and you could just. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Honestly, like that that week we went down there because we went down to Derby, didn't we? To to yeah. record. It's quality, um, wasn't we it? Rent, we rented a house, and but we we brought down like three of us, other mates as well, of us, and yeah, it was just a complete laugh. And like, having them in the studio as well, it completely brought like a different vibe. I'm sure Miroslav got a bit tired of it, but yeah, it was a good time. But <laughs> it could have been a lot worse. I think at one point he even said he were like, I don't usually like mates and like merch dudes being in the studio, but they've actually brought some ideas down, which is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And I think sure. if they were the type to just piss about, then I don't think we'd we'd bring them down. But yeah, it was good fun, isn't it? I yeah, it was a right week with that. I loved it. <laughs> I'm going to bring that so, into it, but you've just done it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to look at the video? Yeah, I'll just yeah get it up now. So we're going to invite you again to um. To a little watch along. Uh, if you go to YouTube and you type in on hollow ground, um, not hallowed ground, it's a hollow ground. And yes, we did mean to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and you type in shut down as two separate words. Um, you press the search engine and you'll get shut down 2.0, skeptic shut down cover, which isn't the one we're talking about right now. But we will be doing it. we will be doing an episode on that eventually, though. So keep your yeah, eyes Yeah, I, d- I definitely feel. think we should. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll have lots to say about the lyrics in that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. so uh, I'll, I'll let you do a countdown. I'm going to give you an obscure number to countdown from this time, yeah? Okay. All right, so you're going to hit play when Ryan says play. Right, I want you to count down in fives from 30. Okay. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Five, zero, play. And there we are. Uh, what venue is this, Ryan? Key Club in Leeds. Um, we were supporting Envisions for their... Key Club. Supporting our boys in Envisions for their album launch, which was a very good show. I'm sure that, mm-hmm. those lads can vouch for that one. It was a solid lineup. It was playing. You can see all our boys down there. It was, it was Envisions uh, Us. It was, it was, it was Cap Captives. And cutting Teeth. Cutting Teeth. Yeah, Cutting Teeth are pretty cool, actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're doing really well recently. I bumped into their singer a few weeks ago, actually. He sounded James. Mm. Yeah, it was nice to play. Yeah. And obviously, so, yeah, we, Captives we are our boys as well. Oh, Cross Captives. captives. Um, so the we captives. decided... To... Oh, and Benji Road to Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that to him because he'll just give you an horrible look. <laughs> so we just decided that we'd go for a live video for this one. Um, you know, we didn't really have um, like a massive story or anything in mind. We just wanted to do a, a decent quality live video. We, we did yeah. one many years ago for you No know, Imperfections, but I think the quality have the, of Christmas to it. And, like, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't have the crowd either. You know? The quality of crowd and our performance has enhanced quite a lot since then. So I think yeah. it was 
we just wanted to capture like with this album we want to show what we're about like mm -hmm. and i think we've done that with these two singles like they're both a bit of fun this it shows what we're about live and there's like backstage shots like you've just seen them where we're just having a bit of like you two doing press ups there we're just pissing about backstage because that's just what we do right we're just normal lads who are like we are a good time local blocks with cans of Ka Carlsberg <laughs> backstage <laughs> boozing it up <laughs> Um, we, we just really wanted to get like, a lot of crowd shots in this one because that, that's something that we've always felt that even if our recordings weren't perfect, even if you know we didn't have many likes on Facebook, even if Instagram comments weren't that great, when we played live, we always felt that we brought a certain standard. Like, yeah, we and te technical fuck ups anyway. We're hoping that people will watch this and want to be part of it and come to a show and like that looks crazy i want to go yeah, see them yeah. and be part of that atmosphere and, and it ties it all together doesn't it? it's like this is the first time we've really gone anywhere and you know spent a lot of money on production for the yeah. album um, well it's and, the first time know, we've taken it properly seriously and actually done a bit of research put some money into it and done, a done what what you're supposed to do when you're in a band instead of just coasting for a few years right i'm gonna s give people a challenge here if you can spot ryan's brother it looks like him, but he's just a blonde version. If you can spot Ryan's brother in this video, print screen him, and um, we might send you something out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Braddon. Showing up with new mics. Yeah. We're in yeah, background. There's... A lot of the leads, a lot of recognise us all from this video. Cause... Yeah. It was... I saw Fran down the front a minute ago now. Yeah, I saw Chris Grease as well with his camera. Oh, I did see him, yeah. That was Joe Wood. He is in the band, but he was there. <laughs> <laughs> Salt Leon. Yeah. Our drummer was at our show. He was at the back. That is me. <laughs> and again, like just to the like, to the basic nature of this track and you know the, the hooks and stuff. Put those lyrics on screen. Shut down. It's not a lyric video. But we just wanted to reinforce that shit. Sticks it in your head, doesn't it? It's yeah. Title of the track. It's been thrown in your face. Yeah. It's like. The video is just it's screaming, shut down, in your head, and yeah. if you throw enough shit, it'll stick, as I always say. Yeah, exactly. So. Crabcore's always been quite a big part of us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I stopped crabcore in there, Too old mm. for now. Because you did your Achilles crab, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Achilles crab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Adam Gadsby, our old guitarist, he's a... Uh... You owe me new pants when I see you all. That's it. One minute thirteen. <laughs> Is that what you said? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, love I'm a bit of Gadsby because it's a bit of heavy bit. Mm. Oh, yeah, shout out Adam Gadsby, former guitarist from Hologram. We still uh, a very good friend of ours as well. I talked yeah, talk to him all the time. We traded track. him in for a larger version. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy Batford, and uh, he came in and fit in like a glove, didn't he? He did. Hand in glove, glove in hand. So, uh, yeah, that's the story behind the shutdown. Mm. This concludes episode two of the On Hollow Ground podcast, the story of shutdown. <laughs>